Hello, in this presentation we will work some short calculation problems, short calculation problems that could be presented in the format of a test with the format of multiple choice questions or short answer questions, but either format that they will be in, there will be some small calculations involved within them. First question, use the following information for, uh, for determining the amount of equity to report. Cash, 61,000, building, 120,500, land, 201,500, and liabilities of 126,500. We will start off with the accounting equation of assets equaling liabilities plus the equity. We'll put the numbers in there. We could list them out in this format saying cash is going to be the 61,000 for the assets section building is going to be 125 for the assets section and land also an asset at 2015 the liabilities they just list out as liabilities so we can just say that's going to be in the liability portion over here at 126500 and then if we were just to add those up then we're going to add these up i'm using the sum function to do so just adding the 61,000, the 120,005, the 2015 will give us the 383,000 plus the liabilities of the 126,005 plus the equity. And this should be actually equals. So here is our formula. And we're just going to be solving for equity, of course. We're going to do so by subtracting the 126,005 from each side. So I'm just going to write that down here. Little much, little much. And 126.5. And then we'll just subtract that out from each side. This 383,000 minus the 126.5. I'm doing a sum function here, which means we're taking this positive number minus that negative number. Subtraction problem providing us with 256,500. That then will be equal to, we'll do the math here. We're taking the 126.5 minus the 126.5, which of course is zero, plus and equity. Therefore, we see that the equity will then equal the uh, 256.5. That's going to be the answer uh, for this question. This one's pretty straightforward. They could ask. They're just asking for exactly what uh, the equity is. Just be careful when you're looking at multiple choice questions that they will be put in any combination of the calculation, um, you know, to come up to calculations that look correct, that the numbers will will come to. So if you were to add, the, you know, the two numbers involved here, that would probably be present within a multiple choice selection calculation. Next problem. Determine the net income of a company for which the following information is available for the month of July. Employee salaries expense of 189,000, interest expense of 19,000, rent expense 29,000, and consulting revenue of 436,000. For this problem, we will need to know what the net income calculation is and then just know how to format our worksheet so that we can do this as quickly as possible if it were in a multiple choice format. Net income, of course, calculated as revenue minus expenses. So we can put this together as a small income statement. I'm going to call it revenue first. It's useful just to know how to format these things. So I'm going to format it similar to an income statement in that we're going to have two columns. I'm not going to use debits and credits here, but a plus and minus format. I'm going to put the revenue in the outer column. I don't need to sum anything up for revenue. Therefore, we'll just place that in the outer column. And then we're going to say expenses. I'm just going to abbreviate, put a colon and note we're going to have all the expenses. So I'm going to have employee salaries interest expense and rent expense and go ahead and indent those notice i'm going to indent those here and just just for the formatting obviously you're going to do this pretty quickly if it's a test question but just note if you put them in this format then once we have our categories i'm just going to pull these into the inside so that we're going to bring down the employee salaries we're going to say that the interest expense was the 19 and the rent revenue was the 29,000. And then we're just going to sum those up. I'm going to say total expenses and sum those up in the outer column. So we're just adding up the 189,000, the 19,000, and the 29,000, providing us with the uh, 237,000. 
then we can say what net income is and that's going to be of course the revenue so i'm just taking the 436,000 minus the 237,000 providing us with net income of 199,000 so just to recap when you're doing this with paper and pencil if you're if you're working a test question i'll make this a bit smaller then you're just looking to put this information in as, as quick a format as possible and revenue minus expenses. Obviously, with this little of information, you could just take revenue here, minus this, minus this, minus this. If you get to a bit more extended problems, you might want to just format it exactly as you would have it on, a, on an income statement because that is an, an easy format to look at, a format that it's less likely to make mistakes on, and therefore you can put the revenue in the outer column add up the expenses in the inner column and then give us the total expenses and then subtract out revenue minus expenses giving us that net income next question company has beginning equity of 279,000 net income of 62,000 withdrawals of 51,000 and investments by owner of 17,000 its ending equity is We'll then include basically our owner's equity calculation when calculating this problem. That's going to be beginning equity plus net income is going to increase the equity plus any with any um, contributions from the owner are going to increase any investments from the owner are going to increase the equity minus draws or withdrawals are going to decrease equity and that's going to be giving us our ending calculation. So you might want to write down that formula, keep that formula in mind. That's basically our owner equity formula. You see a similar calculation when we close out the, um, the temporary accounts in the closing process. So I would just say beginning equity, and we're gonna say this is 279,000. If you're talking about a corporation, we might be talking about retained earnings. And then we're gonna say net income. We're gonna abbreviate net income. We're gonna say that's gonna increase. So I'm gonna put 62,000 of net income. Then I'm going to say draws. I'm just going to abbreviate draws. And that is going to be subtracting. So I'm going to put it in our calculation as a negative of 51,000. And then we have investments. That's what the owner is putting into the company. And that's going to represent an increase in equity, although it doesn't increase net income because it increases what is owed back to the owner. So we're going to put investments. And that's going to be 17,000. So we've got beginning equity plus net income minus draws plus investments should give us ending equity and we'll go ahead and do the math here so we've got uh 279,000 beginning plus net income minus draws because it's a negative number <laughs> plus the 17,000 that'll give us the ending equity in this case of 307,000 so this calculation you might want to memorize it you might want to work with the equity uh, statement for a while you might want to work with what net income is and how it relates to the balance sheet just to get a feel for a better understanding of what we're doing here rather than just memorize the calculation. But at the minimum, you need to memorize the calculation and then spend some time with it uh, to, to kind of understand what the calculation is doing because we're really uh, tying together in this case the income statement with net income to the beginning equity, which is kind of on the trial balance. You got to understand where that's going to where that's going to come from in the process. And then we got the draws and that's also an account that typically is a little bit more difficult to understand doesn't happen that often we don't have draws every day therefore it's it's one of those journal entries um, and one of those accounts that we also often get mixed up especially because it's a contra equity account investments also something doesn't happen every day that's fairly rare of a transactions and uh, therefore the investments also go into retained earnings or to the capital account which is uh, an account that's not generally uh, used for normal transactions but is normally used to close out net income into and therefore this whole process here uh, can be involving accounts that are a bit difficult and is worth spending some time one learning the calculation and then two try to understand what the calculation means in terms of the relationship of the financial statements and these individual accounts that aren't used quite as much but will be involved when dealing with the equity calculation. Next question. Company reported total equity of 155,000 at the beginning of the year. The company reported 220,000 in revenues and 170,000 in expenses for the year. Liabilities at the end of the year of the year totaled 97,000. 
what are the total assets of the company at the end of the year. This problem is kind of combining two different components here where we first have to calculate equity and then use equity to compute our accounting equation in order to find uh, the total assets. So let's first think about our equity calculation, which typically beginning equity plus net income, net income calculated as revenue minus expenses plus investments minus draws would give us the ending balance in, in equity. So we're gonna say that the company reported equity at the beginning. So I'm just gonna call this as the beginning equity. And that's gonna be 155,000. Note that some textbooks, if they're dealing with a sole proprietor, might call it the beginning capital. If you're dealing with a corporation, beginning retained earnings, but the same type of calculation will be involved. It might just be called equity for any type of organization because equity as a total would uh, be, be the same for any type of company, whether it be sole proprietor, partnership, or the corporation so then we're going to say during the year we had revenues of um 220. now we note that when we look at the calculation in terms of the equity section in terms of the statement of equity or the statement of retained earnings we typically increase equity by net income but if a problem breaks out net income into revenue and expenses we can either break out revenue in terms of, of revenue and expenses and then calculate net income or we can just recognize the components of revenue and expenses and note that revenue then will increase equity 220,000 and expenses will decrease the total equity so I'll put that in as a negative 170,000 now obviously if we were to sum those two up if I was to take the 220,000 minus the 170 that would be net income a net increase to the equity but we can just put these two in our calculation that'll be a bit faster if we're just punching this into a calculator 155,000 increased by 220 minus the expenses of 170 and let's make the abbreviation a little bit better and that'll give us the ending equity because we're not showing any investments or any draws at this point so we're assuming there are none so we're gonna sum up and I'm gonna do the math here 155,000 plus 120,000 minus 170,000 gives us our total equity there. Then if we're gonna have our accounting equation, assets equal liabilities plus equity, we can put these numbers in then, equity being 205,000, and they gave us, what else did they give us? The company reported in revenue and that in expenses, liabilities are 97,000. So we also know the 97,000. We'll put the plus there and the equals there. And that equals A. So the math from this point is, is nice and simple. We're just gonna say A is equal to the 97,000 plus the 205,000 or the 302,000. So 97 plus 205 is the 302. Ending answer being the, the total assets. Bit more of a tricky problem in that we had to do basically two calculations. So just keep those separate in your mind. First, we had to figure out what the uh, equity is at the end and then do our typical accounting equation type problem to figure out which component of the accounting equation, in this case assets, was not uh, provided and was being asked for.